Cabrillus, it's good to be with you, and it's good to be with this incredible volume, Shaken Earth, which is your first, but obviously not your last book. Uh, <laughs> Thanks very much, Edwin. Uh, I can tell you that when a book is this uh, large, it shows an immense amount of uh, care and talent, and I know personally how long you were working on this book. Let me just ask you in your own words, what was your motivation in writing this novel, Shaken Earth? Well, it, it began with an idea some years ago of, uh, uh, with the idea of stories uh, my father told me. And he went through uh, an episode in, uh, in Guatemala in 1954 uh, with the, a coup that uh, ultimately brought about a series of uh, anti-democratic governments. So I wish to um, understand the underpinnings of, these, of this. Guatemala is a place that's rather like a microcosm of Latin America. It has half the population is uh, American Indian. It was a signal part of the uh, conquest or conquista. And um, it's a place where you have uh, history plays a, a role uh, that's almost like uh, uh, different lines of history where uh, something that happened 500 years ago still has an effect today. And so this is an effort uh, of, uh, of understanding it. It's a, hit, uh, it's a historical novel uh, with uh, romantic, political, uh, uh, philosophical uh, basis set in 1932. Uh, signal year in the, in the world. Hitler was on the throne in Germany, and his tentacles even went as far as the mountains in Guatemala, oddly enough. And um, this book has just come out, correct? Just come out. And uh, I understand you've gotten some excellent reviews. Right now it's available on Amazon, correct? It's available on Amazon paperback uh, and as a Kindle uh, volume. All right. So um, tell us the, uh, the underpinnings of how the story relates to people today. The um, uh, people, um, uh, people in the United States uh, may be entirely unaware of where Guatemala is and um, how it fits into the history of our own country. I'm uh, a, a Guatemalan uh, father, American mother, and uh, shuttled back and forth between the two places. And it's an effort on my part to, to, um, to get Americans to understand the interconnectedness of this bilateral continent that we have, North and South America. We're not isolated from each other. We, we have connections that go back 500 years at least, the arrival of uh, Europeans and even, and even before. Uh, so it's an effort on, on my part to try to get people to understand um, how events in Latin America, the United States, relate to each other. Uh, did you find that the characters, as most authors have discovered, uh, that the characters take over the writing of the book? Well. Uh, there were times that my wife would ask me, well, what's going, what's going on? What's, what's next? And I said, I don't really know sometimes. It's, I, I can see that these characters, and they react to situations that uh, happen in history or are consonant with, with history. Uh, there are, uh, we had at the, in, in Guatemala at the time, had a, an ally in the United States, uh, Jorge Ubico, who uh, instituted such things as forced labor. Uh, he instituted something called the Law of Fugitives, which allowed a landowner to, uh, to shoot someone he happened to uh, suspect of a crime. Um, this was at a time when the, the Microsoft, the Apple of the time, which was United Fruit, was one of the most highly developed companies in the world at the time, where it could, you could buy a banana, and that's still the truth, you can buy a banana that's come from thousands of miles away, it's gone by ship, it's been refrigerated, it's a clone that's going, that goes back a couple of thousand years. You could get that banana for less than an apple that comes from five miles away. That's still true. And so we have, the, the, at the same time, uh, another commodity is coffee. Coffee is the most widely produced, most widely distributed commodity in the world aside from petroleum, one of the most expensive. It also figures into uh, uh, Latin American history. And 
the bloodiness of it. Uh, the United Fruit uh, hired uh, a man by the name of Machine Gun Maloney and another one named uh, Lee Christmas. Lee Christmas invented the intersecting fields of machine gun fire in Colombia to wipe out strikers, and that was used in the First World War afterwards. Well, obviously, this is a book that people are going to have to read for themselves in order to grasp the enormity of the saga that you have described. Thank you very much for being Thanks with us. Thanks very much, Edward. Thank you.